Barbara, good morning. It does look like the president is using this meeting to attack his political opponent. What did he have to say? That's right. Well, this meeting between Donald Trump and Benjamin Netanyahu comes a day after Vice President Kamala Harris and the likely nominee for the Democrats for the presidential election herself met the Israeli leader. Now, following that meeting, she made some remarks to the press. They weren't that different to things that Joe Biden or, or she has previously said, but there was a forceful tone about them and perhaps a, a different wording around the suffering in Gaza, which she said she wouldn't be silent on. She said she'd ask Benjamin Netanyahu to get the deal done, get a ceasefire deal done, which would also involve the release of the remaining uh, Israeli hostages in Gaza. Uh, Donald Trump, in brief remarks at the top of his meeting with Benjamin Netanyahu at Mar-a-Lago, uh, criticised, lashed out at Kamala Harris uh, for those comments. No, I have no remarks. She's a radical left person, San Francisco, destroyed San Francisco. Uh, she's really a destroyer. She doesn't know how to build. And uh, I think her remarks were disrespectful. They weren't very nice pertaining to Israel. I actually don't know how a person who's Jewish can vote for her, but uh, that's up to them. But she was certainly disrespectful to Israel, in my opinion. Now, Benjamin Netanyahu also commented when asked about Kamala Harris' remarks. He said he hoped that they wouldn't make a difference in terms of Israel's negotiations with Hamas over a possible ceasefire. Otherwise, this was a friendly meeting, a friendly greeting between Donald Trump and Benjamin Netanyahu and his wife. No sign of the strain there was in their relationship. Donald Trump was famously, famously aggrieved when Benjamin Netanyahu was quick to congratulate Joe Biden on his 2020 election victory. Donald Trump uh, arguing that that uh, victory was, was not uncontested. Uh, that did strain relationships, but Donald Trump today uh, denying that they were ever anything but good. And there was certainly no sign of the strain uh, in the images of the meeting that the uh, media was allowed to broadcast. And Barbara, on Kamala Harris, the vice president has received another high profile endorsement. That's right, possibly the highest profile one, the one she's been waiting for from Michelle and Barack Obama. Uh, Barack Obama had initially responded to news that Joe Biden was standing aside less than a week ago, but hadn't endorsed Kamala Harris. In a statement, the Democratic power couple now saying that she is the strength, vision and character to meet the moment, you know, for the demands of this moment. Uh, also releasing, or the Harris campaign released a video to go with that statement where uh, Kamala Harris is seen answering a call from the Obamas. Let's take a listen to some of that now. I can't have this phone call without saying to my girl Kamala, I am proud of you. This is going to be historic. We called to say Michelle and I couldn't be prouder to endorse you and to do everything we can to get you through this election and, and into the Oval Office. Oh my goodness. Michelle Brock, this means so much to me. Uh, now, Kamala Harris, after a whirlwind week, hasn't been on the campaign trail today, but we expect her to hit a couple of swing states pretty soon. Donald Trump, meanwhile, has posted that he intends to go back to Butler, Pennsylvania, the site of the rally where there was that attempt on his life. He says he wants to do it in honor of the man who died there and the other patriots, he says, were there that day. Uh, he hasn't really details of when that might be, but uh, of course you'd expect that he'd be under uh, significant pressure to hold that rally when and if it does uh, come to fruition indoors uh, rather than outdoors. All right, Barbara Miller there in Washington, D.C. Thank you.